Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It's currently just coming up to midnight um, at the end of Saturday, the 18th of June, 2022. I'm currently reading Five Patients by Michael Crichton, and I'm enjoying it very much. It's a very, very interesting book, uh, especially because I work with a client um, on a book called The Future of Healthcare, and that's basically what... Um, what, what he's writing about so there's just some really interesting stuff in there a lot of food for thought um, and yeah tomorrow I'm having a barbecue as a belated birthday celebration with some friends and stuff over spent most of today making food for that really looking forward to it it should be good um, and I guess I'll update you later I've been very remiss with my filming so I've got lots to catch up on both filming and editing really so I'm gonna go do some of that Dane reads I've made some jacket potatoes with vegan cheese from the garden with homemade potato salad. Again, potatoes from the garden. This salad, the lettuce is from the garden. Hummus, kale, and some other goodies. Yo, it is um, vlog time. It is Friday the 24th of June. I have been terrible at keeping you guys updated. I have so much to do. My work list is actually getting manageable now, but I still have a huge list of filming to do. Um, as a result of basically going to Paris, I haven't caught up with all of that. Um, but yeah, I got some books in the post today as well, so I have a little haul to do later. I'm trying to remember where, oh hello Biggie, Biggie's down here. I'm trying to remember where I got to last. I think the last book that I've reviewed for my wrap up was uh, A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin, which was top notch, 4.5 out of 5, very good. So I'll update you on some other stuff. So what we got down here in this little, in this little pile. So I read Five Patients by Michael Crichton. This was really interesting. This was like a four out of five. It was written in the late 60s and it was about Crichton's experience working in like an emergency room. Uh, he actually cre created the show ER based on his like experience in the healthcare industry and whatnot. And it's just really interesting because I've worked on a book called The Future of Healthcare with a client. And um, we talked about a lot of the same stuff that he talks about here, like even as telemedicine. Um, so yeah, that was really fascinating. A full review of that will be coming soon. Biggie's right in the way. Okay, then I finished my audiobook of Catch-22, which I've been listening to while jogging. I basically jog around my office, listen to audiobooks, and um, practice Duolingo. So I finished this. I'm now reading Stranger in a Strange Land. I'm about the fifth of the way through that. But yeah, Catch-22. Really did enjoy this. Probably a four, maybe even a 4.5 out of five. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't just read it as a book, to be honest. I, I think I found it kind of intimidating, um, and the audio of it was really accessible and really kind of easy to sink into. I love, like, Lieutenant Scheisskopf, Lieutenant Shithead, and all of that stuff, and just all of the depictions of, like, the red tape you get in the army and all of that kind of stuff, so it was really cool just for that. Um, probably I liked it more than something happened so you know and i really enjoyed something happened it could go on to be one of my books of the year we've had a few goodies recently i then read a walk in the woods by bill bryson so this is about him and his mate cats uh, they go to hike the appalachian trail spoiler alert they don't make the full thing although it is 2200 miles and a lot of people don't make it um, but yeah really interesting piece of travel writing i have a, a, a friend slash colleague slash client that i work with uh, who lives in appalachia so it's really cool to see the world you know that they live in and just again he does some really cracking travel writing then i read Fool's Paradise by Zoe Brooks um, and this is like a cross between poetry and a play it's actually really interesting and it says here so it was inspired by a visit to Prague after the Velvet Revolution and this is probably I assume it's like 20 odd years old I don't know when the Velvet Revolution was um, assuming it was at the fall of you know the Berlin Wall and the end of the Soviets in the late 90, uh, late 80s early 90s um, but yeah really really cool poetry because it's written to be performed like a play um, and that's just my jam man and there was just some great stuff like I want to try and figure it it has these like bits that come out of nowhere and just um, like it goes vulgar out of nowhere and it just made me laugh when it did that I'm trying to find an example Welcome gentlemen ladies, I will gather your shadows and take them to be clean. I will lay them on the flat stones of the river and beat the shit out of them. Forgive my language, but I believe in accuracy. So yeah, really good stuff. Probably a 4.5 out of 5 for me. One of my favourites, uh, this was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press and this is probably my favourite of the books that she sent me over the years. I also read Hurting Distance by Sophie Hannes. This is a crime novel. This has trigger warnings galore for rape and sexual assault basically. 
Um, and it's a pretty tough little read. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it, but again, it was quite rough. And my main criticism with this was that there were so many twists and turns that there were almost too many. And it was, you, you get the sense that the narrator is an unreliable narrator because she's, a lot of it's written in second person of her addressing her lover um, who's gone missing at the start of it. And you just know that she's going to be unreliable. Now, it turns out she's unreliable because she isn't in possession of all of the facts rather than because she's deliberately being unreliable, but still. But yeah, probably a solid 3.5 out of 5. It's pretty good. I'm now reading The Cowardly Lion of Oz, which is over there by my cowardly panther of Wickham. Um, so this is part of my buddy read with Joel Swagman. We're reading all of the Wizard of Oz books. I am a few books ahead at this point. We've both completely gone off schedule. Um, but I am enjoying it so far. Um, it's written by Ruth Plumley Thompson, so it's not one of the original Oz books, but it is still very much worth reading, if you ask me. Um, some great bits of humour. I told my friend Joe, actually, let me find this transcript. So I said to her, um, I've got a new chat-up line. I'm going to be like, fuck giving you the D, I'm going to give you the Z. And they'll be like, what does Z stand for? And I'm going to be like, because there's nowhere for it to sit. So I took that from Wizard of Oz, and her response was, Jesus, no, gives me the ick. So, maybe I won't actually use that. But yeah, it's on course for a 3.5, maybe a 4. I'm about halfway through it. I'm then going to read The Road to June by Brian Herbert, Frank Herbert, and Kevin J. Anderson. So that's next. And as I say, I've got Stranger in a Strange Land. I've got some new books in the post today. i got an Alan Bennett arrived, and i got some... Um, uh, Spike Milligan. I'm also reading as my bedtime books. Well, I'm reading The Devils of Luden by um, Aldous Huxley, and it's... Uh, I'm just ticking it off because I want to read everything that Huxley wrote. Um, but I'm also reading my French read, Méfiez-vous uh, des abeilles, I think, or something like that, um, which is the French version of Why I'm Afraid of Bees by R.L. Stein, one of the Goosebumps books, and it's just very, very easy to read. Although, having said that, it is actually harder to read than Harry Potter was, so there is that. I don't know why that is. Um, it's to do with the tenses that have been used. I can't wrap my head around what specific tense. Because I'm looking at it and I'm like, but the way that word ends, that's like a cross between future tense and past tense. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what tense that is. But I guess it's probably quite a common one for storytelling. I don't know. So that's where I'm, I'm at with all of that. Life-wise, well, we had my barbecue on Sunday, which was really nice, and had some friends over. And then we went to the Mad Squirrel. I was a bit hungover on the Monday because I drank some room after we got back um, then all this week I don't I've not really done much I had an Asda shop come so I haven't even had to go to the supermarket much so I've just been at home pottering about doing some stuff in the garden um, got some more stuff I want to do in the garden but also I have hay fever it's also been really hot which sort of hasn't helped with my productivity and all of that stuff um, but yeah I've been doing that been doing a lot of work tomorrow uh, Sabrina's going charity shopping in the morning, so I might go with her, but I, I literally fell asleep at like 9am and woke up at 5pm today, so my sleep pattern is screwed. But if I wake up in time, I'll probably go charity shopping with her, and then maybe back here to do a couple of board games. We've got an escape room to do. And then there's a gin tasting event at the Arts Centre, um, which is also coupled with an art exhibition, so I want to go there and pick up some art and maybe taste some gin. I don't know. I'll see if they've got a non-alcoholic one, I think, because, um... Again, with my sleep pattern weird, I don't want to get drunk, I want to be able to be productive when I get home. And then I might go to the Rose and Crown uh, Sunday Jam, which for some reason is on the Saturday. Uh, Friends Band is playing live tonight, but I probably won't go and see them. We'll see. I don't know, I might pop out for a drink, we'll see. Depends where they're playing, to be honest. Um, and then there's the Art Centre Sunday Jam on Sunday, which I may or may not go to. That's about me updated. Oh, greetings everybody. It is 6 p.m. on Thursday the 30th of June. I have been terrible with vlogging, so we're gonna do a good old two-week vlog. Here's Biggie. I've been doing a bit of a spring clean, hence those board games. They're going downstairs. Um, I've basically decided... Oh shit, better close the window before the cat tries to jump out of it. I've basically decided, because uh, eBay has limited how many items I can list on the website, so instead of just having all of my old books and records uh, and board games and stuff just taking up space most of them are slowly but surely going into charity shops um, and I'm only keeping the ones that you know 
aren't shit basically so like I'm keeping my Stephen King and my Agatha Christie and things like mm -hmm. that um, I will still have them up for sale on eBay but it's just gonna like reduce my itinerary and it's kind of a case of if they sell great if not oh well you know um, so the last few days I've taken a rucksack and a canvas bag to the charity shop each day going to different charity shops I've also bought like I think six books and a record while I've been there too so that's all good um, my office chair collapsed on me the other day, so I now have a new one. It has this snazzy pillow, and I'm basically using the base of the old one now as a footstool. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, been hard at work all week with clients and bits and bobs like that. Um, you know, still cracking on. I actually have a Q&A, a client Q&A at 7pm this evening, so I'll be doing that. My sleep was all over the place. I eventually ended up um, going to bed at like 9am and stuff. Uh, but I finally got my medication sorted from the doctor, which is good because I'd ran out of that. But they still won't put me on a repeat prescription. So it means every time I run out of medication, I have to get an appointment. But the only way to get an appointment is to ring them bang on 8.30 and hope. Like there was one day this week, I waited on hold for over an hour and then they just put the phone down on me. And by the time I'd made it through the queue again, after about another hour, they'd ran out of appointments and told me to ring back the next day. And it's like, but, you know... So yeah, I was going through some medication withdrawal, which was no fun, getting like really bad anxiety, but also nausea and like this weird thing where you move your head and it's like your eyes don't keep up with you. It's like, it's like having a lag through what you see basically. But anyway, other than that, it's been all good. I have a gig on Sunday. I'm playing at Far Out Festival. Um, so my band are playing for half an hour and I'm also going to have a stall there selling books. So that should be good. Biggie is here. Where's my mouse? I need my mouse. Um, I'm just going to update you on what I've been reading as well. As I say, because I've been so bad at um, keeping up to date with everything, I'm just going to do a, a good old-fashioned two-week vlog. Still need to edit my other vlogs and my Paris vlog and stuff. So, wrap up. Well, I read Five Patients by Michael Crichton. That was probably a 4 out of 5, maybe even a 4.5 out of 5. I think I've already talked about that. Um, but yeah, just... Ow, you little shit, fucking shithead over here just bit me arm. Bastard, that wasn't nice. Um, but yeah, Five Patients was pretty good. It was written in like the late 60s when uh, Crichton was working in an emergency room and it's basically him just talking about healthcare and the future of healthcare. Some really interesting stuff, especially... <coughs> now I've got his fluff in my throat. <coughs> some really interesting stuff, especially given that, you know, it's so old and actually some of the things he talked about, like he talked a lot about personalised healthcare and telemedicine and stuff and those are really only just happening now. PayPal's messaging me. What have I bought? I don't want to buy anything. I don't know what I've bought. It just says order confirmation 25 quid, which is money I don't have. Oh, Facebook. Facebook ads. Okay. Because I was advertising my new book. Um, yeah, I'm pretty skint, so I need my clients to pay me on time, really, because otherwise I am going to be in a lot of trouble when rent goes out. I had the same problem last month. I had to borrow some money from my mum to tide me over for a couple of days, so I might have to do the same. I'm not sure. Or I can sell some shares, but then I'd have to sell at a loss, which I don't really want to do. But I think I'm going to have to, actually. In fact, let's do that now while I think about it. Um, because, again, otherwise, I am in trouble. So let's have a look. What's at the lowest loss? Uh, anyway, after five patients, then I finished reading my audiobook of Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Probably a four out of five. I did really enjoy it. It was a bit long, um, but the audiobook of it was pretty good and there were some really funny ideas and stuff. Um, I do think I probably enjoyed Something Happened a little bit more, but that's because I can relate to it more because I've not been in the army, which is like the theme of Catch-22. But I have worked in an office, which was the theme of Something Happened, you know. Um, so yeah, that was good. And I'm now listening to Stranger in a Strange Land by uh, Robert Heinlein. And I'm about coming up to halfway through of that on the audiobook. I do my jogs around my office while I do that because I need to try and lose some weight. I also read Bill Bryson, A Walk Through the Woods, which was about him hiking along the Appalachian Trail with his friend Katz. Um, not you, Biggie, not that kind of cat. And um, yeah, they didn't walk the full trail, but there was some really interesting just travel writing and history about Appalachia and stuff. And that was particularly cool to me because um, I, have a, I work with a client slash colleague who lives in Appalachia, so it was good to kind of see a bit more about that. So I gave that like a four out of five. I read Sophie Hannah, Hurting Distance, which is a pretty cool thriller. Um, 
very trigger warningy for rape and sexual assault. I mean, that's basically the theme of it. So I think I even said in my review, it, it didn't have like a high body count, but it did have a high rape count. So just bear that in mind. But I quite enjoyed it. Like it's probably a 3.5 out of five, but you know, it's a thriller. It ticked all the thriller boxes. Then I read Zoe Brooks. Now, which one was, what was this called? This was called Fool's Paradise. And this was really interesting. It was like long form poetry, um, but it's kind of written in the form of a play and it's been performed a few times and I would love to have seen it performed actually because I think it would have been really interesting, but just very well written, very enjoyable, 4.5 out of five, hoping to speak to her for my radio show. Then I read The Cowardly Lion of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So that was the third of the Oz books written by her after L. Frank Baum died. And I think she's really getting into a stride now. There was some really good humor in it. Um, I think I gave it probably a four out of five. It felt much more like one of the original Oz books rather than a, like someone trying to write a, a homage to them, which is what the later ones felt like. So uh, yeah, that was that. Then I read The Road to June by Brian Herbert, Frank Herbert, and Kevin J. Anderson. And this is like, it's got some non-fiction stuff, so like letters and things like that, that uh, Frank Herbert wrote about the original June series. It's got like his first draft for the first June book, which is really weird. It's like a fever dream because a lot of the characters are different, a lot of the ideas are different, but you can still tell that it's June. Um, so that was fascinating. And then there were some short stories that take place uh, one of them is at the same time as the first June book, and then there are a few that take place be between some of the um, like prequels and whatnot that Herbert uh, Herbert Junior and Anderson wrote. And yeah, overall pretty interesting. Probably like a 3.5 out of 5. It wasn't as good as an actual instalment in the June series, and it did kind of feel like what it was, which was just a collection of like random stuff, basically. Then I read Poetry in Motion by Alan Bennett, and that was really cool. Let me see where it is. Can I see it? I don't know where it's gone. Is this it? Yeah. So this is basically, it's like a poetry collection featuring uh, Thomas Hardy, A. E. Hausman, John Betjeman, W. H. Auden, Lewis McNeese, and Philip Larkin. So it has bits of their poetry, and then it's kind of interspersed with Bennett um, writing like autobiographical notes on them, basically, and sharing stories. So they were all really interesting. I can't remember who it was. I want to say it was Auden. One of them, his wife died, and he proposed to his secretary by taking her to the grave of his wife pointing to an unused plot next to it and saying that's for you and then they got married so yeah that was weird but yeah probably four out of five it's not really my kind of poetry and i don't think if it had just been a straight collection i would have enjoyed it as much but the uh, biographical information was really cool and now i've been reading last chance to see by douglas adams and mark carwardine it's over there um and basically what happened was douglas adams who wrote the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy he was commissioned to go off and search for some rare animals for like the BBC and he really enjoyed the experience so he kind of went off on his own dime to go and try and track down some more of these rare and almost extinct animals hence last chance to see and what's really interesting is it's kind of a biology book because it's about all of these animals but it's also um, travel writing as well and it's like it's up there I mean my friend Stephen Colgan who's a writer friend he says he has a first edition signed by both authors mm. and he said it, it's his favorite travel book and I said well it's it's definitely up there. I mean, it's probably on par with like a Bill Bryson or something like that. And obviously with Adams' uh, humour to it. So that's what I've been reading. And then next I'm going to read more Goon Cartoons by Spike Milligan, which is over there. So I'm looking forward to that. But yes, now I'm going to go off and do a little bit more filming. And then I'm going to go and do this, uh, do this, do this client call. So yeah, I'll catch you later. I'll try and finish this vlog this weekend and we'll, we'll try and get back to normal service soon. It's just been so busy. Yo, hello, it is uh, quarter to 11 on Wednesday the 6th of July. Um, it has been mad, to be honest. I, I can't even, again, I'm not doing a very good job at this vlogging malarkey. And actually, I finally caught up to e I finally, I finally caught up to editing some vlogs recently as well. And I think I'm back in May, so I'm like two months behind again. And I want to catch up because I've got my Paris vlog to post. Um, so yeah, I'll get there eventually. Um, basically, it's just, during the week I've just been super busy working. I've also been having a big clear out and um, yeah, like taking a load of stuff to charity shops and things like that. Um, and then just working and trying to have a bit of a spring clean and clean the house because my, my cleaner has COVID so she hasn't been around for over a month so it's getting a bit janky, you know. Um, 
And then yeah, at the weekend I've just been keeping busy. So this weekend, Saturday, I went to Far Out Festival, back to the garden, um, which was a little outdoor thing organised by a friend who puts on events. Uh, at a pub called The Rising Sun in Ickford and that was really good. Um, my band played there for half hour or so in the rain but we had people dancing in the rain so that was quite good. Um, and also I took some books along because I had some stalls there so I sold some books. I sold about 50 quid worth of my books which I pretty much immediately used to buy artwork. So you know I bought artwork and a t-shirt and a few other bits. Um, but yeah no that was good and then um, Sunday there was Desperate Carnival uh, over by Wickham Arts Centre so I went to that, I had a few pints there and then we went to uh, the Bellevue for um, the Sunday Jam there, got quite drunk um, to the point at which it actually made me really ill for like, I was really ill yesterday and on Monday and today I'm still not very well, I think I might, must have caught a cold or something as well. So I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, my voice is kind of gone. On Monday my voice had just gone totally. So I had a hangover but I also had like cold symptoms and all of that stuff. So I wasn't doing particularly good. Well that's about it, that's about it. Um, as I say, I've been, it's actually looking quite nice in here now. Like You can see up there, you can see where I've started sorting through all those vinyl records. Those ones up there, up at the top, which way, that way, those ones I'm keeping all of those. Um, but yeah, I've sorted through loads of my books. Um, and there's also, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see, I, on the top of my wardrobe in my bedroom there are a bunch of vinyls up there, sorry a bunch of vinyl, vinyl is the singular and the plural um, and those ones, probably most of those are going to go to charity shops as well. I'm just trying to keep stuff where I don't mind if it stays in my permanent collection but I'm also happy to sell it. Um, because eventually the kind of the goal is, is like with Stephen King for example, I'm keeping all of my King because it's nice to have Stephen King around the house. But equally I've got more listed because eventually I want to get all of them in the same editions and things like that and I want to get like Folio Society editions of some of my favourites. So um, yeah, so that's the plan anyway, I'm working on that. In terms of what I've been reading, I don't really know what I last updated you on. Um, but I've read, I've been reading The Goon Show Scripts, The Book of the Goons and More Goon Cartoons by Spike Milligan, those are all 3.5 out of 5. Spike Milligan is an English humorist. He was the writer behind the Goon, sh Goon Show. These days, his writing's fairly problematic because he has a lot of like negative, um, you know, perceptions towards everything from gay people to Asians and all this stuff. Um, but he was a vegetarian, which was quite. I mean, he was born in 1918 and he fought in the Second World War as well. So I think he picked up quite a lot of the bad stuff in the army. Um, but yeah, if you can kind of get past that, it's quite funny at times. I'm currently reading more Goon Show scripts as well. And the only other book I really have to talk to you about is Dead If You Don't by Peter James. So this is one of the Roy Grace crime novels. And um, yeah, I picked this up as part of my little trips around the charity shops. And um, yeah, it's good. It's book like number 16 or something. It was about a kidnapping, but it had this weird bit where the it's set up as though it's going to do one kind of story. And then suddenly it sort of changes I guess I don't know it was a bit weird um, I feel as though it could have done without that because it was just overdone misdirection it was like 200 pages of misdirection and then it's like no we're going over here and it's like oh okay well I feel like you could have done the same misdirection in 100 pages you know um, but he is a very very good writer so I gave this a 4 out of 5 I gave all of those Spike Milligans 3.5 out of 5 um, oh yeah and I finished reading The Devils of Loudon uh, Lu The Devils of Loudon 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 I guess, I don't know, it's, it's in France, and this is by Aldous Huxley, and the problem I had with this, well I gave it like a 2 out of 5, and it was just very boring, it's about a guy who was burned at the stake for witchcraft, and for like, making nuns think they were possessed and all of this stuff, um, so you would expect it to be good, but it was just very dense and very overwritten and just not very interesting, so I read this as my bedtime book. So now that this is ticked off, my next bedtime book is going to, well, I'm just switching into reading in French at the moment. So I'm currently finishing off uh, Méfiez-vous des abeilles by R.L. Stein, which is Why I'm Afraid of Bees from the Goosebumps series. So I'll probably finish that tonight. I've got some asterisks, I've got all kinds of stuff up there. Eventually, eventually I have Cimetière, which is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. So that one's going to be a bit of a, bit of a challenge, especially because I'll have to write a 650 odd word review of it in French. So that would be difficult. <laughs>
But yes, we've got all that to look forward to. I've just made Bombay potatoes um, because my potato plants, I got, I planted loads of potatoes in the garden and they're all coming up really nicely. So I've had loads of potatoes to harvest. So yeah, I've just been trying to think of any recipes I can think of involving potatoes. That's what I had today. It took me 45 minutes to make, but it was lovely. It was really good. And there's loads left as well. And I had that with a bit of uh, cr uh, crispy kale, which was also from the garden. So that is where I'm at, and I think I should probably love you and leave you and start another vlog, even though it's Wednesday. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching this car crash of a reading vlog. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.